Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Nanam Paramam Dheyam Knowledge is Supreme Welcome back. So we are looking at controller tuning and let us look at uh, how can we use heuristic tuning methods to tune a controller and these are uh, very general methods uh, in a way that uh, you do not actually require a full process model for, uh, for uh, applying or using these uh, methodologies. Uh, what you these are typically uh, these are mainly developed to assist a practicing engineer such that if you are operating a plant in that case if you want to tune a particular controller which uh, is already existing how do you end up tuning it and uh, there are two broadly two ways uh, two types of methodologies which can be used uh, one is uh, known as an open loop tuning method where uh, you make the controller switch off the controller take action uh, into your own hand and that is uh, operating the plant in a manual mode and uh, end up uh, getting the controller parameters that is known as an open loop tuning method and there are some methodologies uh, where you go about closed loop tuning where you keep the controller on so that uh, most of the things are uh, the primary action is still taken by the controller but you tune down the effect of the controller so as to get some information about the process. So whether you use a closed loop tuning method or an open loop tuning method, the whole idea is to identify what is the underlying process model. So <clears throat> in heuristic tuning, what you want to do is identify the process model. by conducting some tests. So if it is uh, done in an open loop, it will be known as open loop testing when controller is off, which is a simpler problem to deal with or if the controller is on, it is known as closed loop tuning or closed loop testing. So these are, are simpler methods uh, to analyze <coughs> but risky because you are switching off the controller so there is no guarantee that the system would remain stable or your product uh, would remain close to your set point value. So in that case uh, you, you are putting a lot uh, into the hand of the operator and if the operator is not experienced he may drive the process towards instability. As against that they uh, tend to minimize the loss because you are still operating very close to your set point value the controller is on but analysis is tricky. So depending on uh, which uh, method is comfortable to you, either you can do a closed loop testing or open loop testing. So the, <coughs> the, the open loop testing method is based on uh, uh, generating. <coughs> so when we talk about open loop testing, so here is our, let us say this is the process. This is the output, you measure the output then it gets compared with the set point value, the error is generated, error goes to the controller then it goes to the control valve and then <coughs> you go that manipulated input goes back to the process. So here when you want to do open loop testing you have to switch off the controller. So the way uh, you do it is <coughs> you make the controller, so whenever if you see 
the board of a the panel of a controller is turned off so if that is the case operator can change the wall position manually that is what we know as a manual operation um, so what uh, we would be doing is uh, we would be closing this uh, we will be opening this uh, loop so that is known as open loop so you no longer pass any feedback and uh, what you do is uh, you give a step change so let us say a step change of magnitude a into the wall opening so if it is a wall uh, then the operator would open the wall by a small fraction and then observe what do you get as the measured output so that is uh, this thing which is done during open loop testing that you can convert the controller uh, to put the controller into off mode so now the controller does not come into the analysis all you are analyzing is the effect of wall transfer function process transfer function and measurement and you are seeing uh, if uh, you have a step change into the wall opening how does your output change so essentially what you are interested in is finding this entire transfer function so this transfer function is known as a process reaction curve <coughs> so what we are interested in is how does this measured output change as a function of the wall opening and this is obtained in a for a real process <coughs> which is nothing but a product of gv gp and gm so if you have these three quantities you can also uh, generate uh, the process reaction curve even though you do not have an actual plant uh, for which uh, you want to do the open loop testing so we have already seen uh, how do you <coughs> okay <coughs> so let us say this particular response uh, looks like this So the response uh, depending on a very general uh, process it will look like this so this response is known as process reaction curve this is how the process reacts to the dis uh, to the uh, testing so if this final value is b and the slope at inflection point is s what we uh, require is uh, you want to write down this process reaction curve which is ymas over us equal to a first order plus dead time model so this is an approximation we want to approximate any process as a first order plus dead time and uh, you would use this process reaction curve to represent it in that form and we have already seen how do you convert this kind of a response into a process reaction curve into a first order plus dead time model you would know that in this case kp will be equal to b by a tau will be equal to b by slope and td uh, will be equal to this so from an actual response uh, you can convert it into a first order plus dead time model so i am saying this as a model because this is not how the process is this is uh, one way uh, the process response can be represented and then this open loop tuning will give you a guideline about how does your controller parameter like kc tau and tau d depend on the values of kp tau and td so one of those methods uh, is known as a cohen kuhn method so it says that you obtain uh, the transfer function in the form of this process reaction curve ym over u equal to uh, first order plus dead time model and then it tries to achieve a good trade off between minimum offset 
quarter decay ratio and minimum integral of squared errors and based on this if you want to use a proportional controller then the best values of the proportional controller according to this method would be given by this formula which is dependent on kp tau and td so once you have these values of these uh, first order plus dead time uh, model which is a gray box model you can obtain the value of the best controller gain for a p controller if it is a pi controller uh, then this is how the gain would be calculated and this is how the integral time constant will be calculated and for a pid controller these are the values uh, recommended by the cohen and cohen method now one thing i would like uh, to put your attention to is let us say if you focus only on the controller gain you would see that uh, the method says that if i use a certain gain for a, a p controller if i go from p to pi controller then i should cut down on the gain and we have seen uh, uh, that uh, when you use an integral action uh, it may uh, tend to de the tendency of the system to destabilize increases and because of that you have to cut down on the value of the gain uh, which you can use the derivative action is added uh, to improve this uh, response and that is why whenever you have a pid controller the gain which you can use is even higher than what you can use for a p controller so it will give you the fastest response another method uh, which uses open loop tuning is uh, ziegler nichols open loop tuning method and uh, uh, let me uh, give you Uh, you a uh, word of caution that uh, there is a very popular method by the same uh, ziegler and uh, ziegler and nichols which is a closed loop tuning method so that method is very popular uh, just for the sake of completeness i am giving you uh, the open loop tuning method which has been proposed by them as well and uh, here are this is a more simpler method and it penalizes only quarter decay ratio and what you can see that again the same trend is followed that the p controller will have a intermediate gain pi will have a lower gain than p and the pid will have a higher gain than a p controller so you can see that all these methodologies uh, they would try to follow this uh, uh, basic uh, Uh, analysis which we have done for p pi and pid controller just that the values which you get are based on the criteria which is selected <coughs> so these are the two uh, commonly used methods for open loop tuning now one of the main disadvantage of open loop tuning is that uh, you are putting lot of emphasis on the operator to maintain the plant operation when he gives the set point uh, step change into the wall opening if he gives a much bigger uh, change in the set uh, in the step step a bigger step change into the manipulated input then the system may uh, drive to a new steady state or it may go into an unstable region so lot of uh, Uh, times uh, there is a possibility that uh, uh, you one is you would lose production as well as uh, you may destabilize or shut down the plant so that uh, the, one of that reason uh, prompted the development of closed loop tuning methodologies wherein you would want the controller to be on even when you are doing the tuning now uh, the main uh, challenge here is that as the controller is on whatever the model you, which you are going to identify uh, from this response is going to be dependent on the controller parameters which are already there and which may not be optimal so because of that it becomes very tricky uh, to obtain the true process model when the controller is already on so that is why the analysis becomes little trickier when you talk about closed loop tuning methods so i will give you some of the simpler uh, ways in which uh, the closed loop tuning can be done <coughs> so closed loop tuning uh, uh, when you want to do what you are interested in is obtaining ultimate gain and ultimate period so for the open loop testing uh, all we were interested in uh, was uh, to convert your actual response into a first order plus dead time model in closed loop tuning we are interested in obtaining these two values uh, represented as ku and pu so let me explain you what do i mean by ku and pu so uh, let us say uh, so for this closed loop tuning what you do is you put in uh, you have the controller on the only difference is uh, you 
so controller is on but it is a proportional controller so tau i or 1 over tau i is 0 and tau d is also 0 so only a proportional controller is used so it will ensure that the system will remain stable and you keep on increasing the gain of the controller. So we are going to keep on increasing the gain of the controller, we have studied stability. So you will realize that as you keep on increasing the controller gain, you are eventually going to reach uh, a stability limit after which uh, the response may become unstable. So you are not going to make the system unstable, but you are going to find out at what limit the system reaches the st stability limit. That means when till you get sustained oscillations. into the output. So sus having sustained oscillations would mark the boundary of stability. So you would the objective is to find the controller gain a proportional controller gain which will give you sustained oscillations and <coughs> that gain is known as the ultimate gain. So this will be represented as the ultimate gain and if the corresponding response <coughs> so at that ultimate gain the output has sustained oscillations the corresponding time period is known as the ultimate period. <coughs> So that is how one can obtain uh, the ultimate gain and ultimate period from closed loop tuning experiment and this can be done in a real plant. Uh, the only tricky part is uh, if you do this uh, then you are relying on the process uh, depending on uh, the <coughs> information about the process uh, this amplitude of variation. So this represents the amplitude of variation. may be large. So because of that when you simply use uh, this P controller based uh, closed loop tuning, uh, you may oscillate the system to a very high magnitude, again uh, something which you may not want to do on a regular basis. So to alleviate that uh, there is another method of doing closed loop tuning that is known as an auto tuning method which is very popular. So in auto tuning method again the controller is on but it is made an on off controller with specified u max and mu min. So you can say how much your manipulated input is going to change around the uh, steady state value and uh, if the amplitude of output variation is too large, uh, you may clamp this u max and u min to be very close to each other so that the amount of variation in the, uh, the controlled variable output would be smaller. So there is a way to tune how much is going to be the amplitude of this oscillation. So typically uh, when you do that, the response uh, is going to look like uh, this. So your manipulated input uh, would look like a step uh, a pulse response which is clamped by the maximum and minimum value which you have set. So here the response shows that it is set at uh, plus minus uh, 0 0.05 uh, around the <coughs> steady state value and correspondingly the output shows uh, this sawtooth type of a response. It is not entirely an oscillation um, like you would see for a typical auto <coughs> method which you had seen earlier using proportional controller but this type of response also give you some relationship between the magnitude of input change uh, to the magnitude of output change which will give you the gain and for this type of a uh, auto tuning exercise uh, your ultimate period uh, remains similar that it will be the 
distance uh, peak to peak distance between the two troughs or two crests so, and uh, the ultimate gain uh, is slightly different it is four times <coughs> the uh, height uh, here the man manipulated input <coughs> divided by uh, the amplitude of uh, this uh, output so the pi comes in here because this is not a completely sinusoidal response but uh, this is still related to the gain between input and output so using uh, auto tuning method also you can get pu and ku and now uh, there are different tu heuristic tuning rules which will relate this ku and pu to the controller parameters so very commonly used methodology is ziegler nichols uh, closed loop tuning so this is different from the one which we had seen earlier which was uh, ziegler nichols open loop tuning so here uh, you uh, this tuning rules are based on this ultimate uh, gain and ultimate period and you will see that uh, these are the tuning rules again they follow a similar nature uh, this is 0.5 times ku so you would use uh, ku represents the stability limit so you cut down into half so your proportional controller is operated as halfway from the stability limit so this will ensure that the system would be stable the pi controller has even slightly lower gain than that and this is how the integral time constant is related now what uh, people realize uh, by using ziegler nichols tuning rules was that the response tend to be very oscillatory and with a very uh, small value of damping coefficient so if you do not want uh, in large oscillations into your system then tds and leuven kind of detune these controllers uh, to make the so the response is little slower than the ziegler nichols rule but it is less oscillatory and what uh, these are the tuning parameters which are given by the tyrius leuven uh, method where the p controller has the same equation uh, but all the other controllers are detuned significantly the gains are much smaller than ziegler nichols and integral time constants are larger which uh, in both uh, of these would uh, are going to reduce the speed of uh, response but also they are going to improve in terms of uh, decay ratio the, the response will not be very oscillatory so uh, by using a heuristic tuning uh, you can either use open loop or closed loop tuning method and then here are some of the ready made formulas uh, which you can use lot of times uh, these will give you a starting point uh, which uh, you can set your system and then once you have these as a good initial guess uh, you can still tweak uh, some of these parameters and uh, try to obtain the final best values depending on the process at hand so these can be used as a guideline uh, you may not uh, fix or you may not always operate your plant at ziegler nichols tuning rule or at the values given by tyrius leuven method these uh, should be used as a initial guess around which you tweak to uh, see the response of your actual process and when you are happy with the way uh, the system responds uh, then you lock down those controller parameters okay so we will take a short break here and when we come back we'll look at a more model based uh, ways to tune a pid controller and uh, those will be direct synthesis based method or uh, a frequency response based method thank you